Okay, we got our coins all laid out here, so we'll just check the weights on these. <clears throat> so the first one we'll test here, or we'll check, we'll weigh up, is the uh, Canadian maple leaf. You can see what it looks like here. It's one troy ounce of pure gold. And so it should weigh 31.1 grams, which is one troy ounce. As you can see there, 31.2 which is pretty typical. It usually weigh a little more than than what it has to weigh to be an ounce. Next one, we'll do the Gold Eagle. It's an American minted coin, and it's actually not pure gold. It's um, about 90% gold, which is pretty much 22 carat. Uh, the reason they do this is just so it's not quite as soft as the the 24 carat ones, like the Gold Maple. The Gold Maple, you have to be really, really careful otherwise you'll scratch it and deplete the value. So this one, since it's 22 carat, there's still an ounce of gold contained in it, so it actually should weigh about 34 grams. Yep, 34, just like we expected, so that's good. The next one here, it's a one troy ounce, three nines silver. And normally with the silver, you want to wear gloves when handling them so they don't get tarnished, but as you can see, this one's already pretty tarnished so I'm not too concerned about it. So it should also weigh 31.1 grams. And there's 31.2. Okay. One thing that I think is kind of cool about the go difference between gold and silver, at least just with the coins, the noticeable difference anyway, other than one's yellow and one's silver, um, is the gold one, they both weigh exactly the same, but it's so much smaller than the silver one. And that's because gold is a lot more dense than silver. Yeah, as you can see there. The silver one's a little bit thicker than the gold one. And a lot bigger around. Yet they still weigh exactly the same. 31.2. 31.2. And then the Morgan silver dollar. It's actually only 90% silver, and it's just typical coin silver. That's what all the coins used to be before 1964. Well, at least the dimes, quarters, and half dollars. So this one which should weigh about 26.7, 26.8 grams. So yeah, 26.7, that's because it's a little bit worn. And so that's very typical. So we have the right weights there, so we already have a pretty good idea that they're real gold and silver. So now we'll come over to our specific gravity set up here. And we'll start with the, the gold maple. So what you want to do is tear the weight that's already on the scale. So it'll read zero. Well, we've got to center this a little bit better. So we'll weigh it, 31.16. So we'll type 31.16 into our calculator. And now we'll make sure the scale reads zero again, and drop it onto this tray that's suspended in the water. So now, since there's nothing other than the water touching the scale, the scale is going to measure the displacement of the water. So there's 1.63 grams of water that has just been displaced from placing that <clears throat> that coin in there. So we'll take the weight and divide it by how much water was displaced. There we go, 19.23. And that's 19.23 grams per cubic centimeter. So that's a perfect number for pure gold. 19.2 is what we want to see. So now we'll do the gold eagle. So as I mentioned before, the gold eagle is actually 90% gold. And it weighs 33.93 on this scale. And it displaces 1.96 or 
grams of water. So that gives us 17.4 grams per cubic centimeter, which is another exactly what we're looking for. So between 17 and 18 is what you want to see for the, the 22 carat. And, I mean, you can do this test with um, jewelry as long as there's, you know, as long as it's a solid piece of jewelry and not hollow. Uh, so this is a great test that we can do that'll let us know if something is precious or not and also won't damage the item like the other tests will. So this is the one troy ounce coin. 31.18 and divided by 2.99 that gives us 10.42 which is pretty typical for your rounds generally 10 point, between 10.4 and 10.5 is what we want to see 10.5 is the optimal number to see um, but again there could have been tiny air bubbles they got stuck in the grooves or something that, that offset it. So as long as it's above 10 usually, you know, it's, it's good. Well, not for pure silver, but we would know that it was silver if it was 10 or above. Or 10 karat gold usually is around 10 or 11. And then the Morgan, what we should expect to see is maybe 10.1, 10.2. It's usually what we see for sterling grade or 90%. Oh, I don't think I did a tear on the container here. It's my fault. So we'll get it to say zero again. And weigh it. There we go, 26.69. Divided by 2.63. Yeah, so 10.148, which is, again, it's a good number for sterling grade material. So yeah, it's a very simple test to do, just measuring how much water is displaced and um, putting that into the, the weight will give us grams per cubic centimeters.